Hey, 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 everybody. How are we all doing? Hope everybody's doing good and welcome to another Adobe Live. And of course, no strangers here today at all because I'm here with Joe. How are you doing, Joe? Hey, how's it going, everyone? I've uh, I've just posted an Instagram story and I've got a feeling I put a typo on it. So I've got no <laughs> fret lines across my face. Um, no. But anyway, I'm doing good <laughs> other than that. How are you doing, Tony? Yeah, all good. Thank you. Oh, all good. I, I haven't just made a typo in. I didn't do an Instagram story. I feel bad. <laughs> I feel left out. Let's see who we've got with us today. Of course, Joe, you know you know the ropes here and all of that stuff. We've got all of our usual friends here. So we've got Andreas, we've got Kirsty, we've got Sandrine. Hi, Sandrine. We've got Oliver, Gareth. Gareth is going to be excited because of what we're doing today, I'm sure. Uh, actually, I've already said it's going to be an AE thing anyway. So, uh, Sean is here. Uh, we have Stuart. I think I mentioned Angus a moment ago, possibly, but doesn't matter. It hurts twice. There's a guy called Tim. Tim in the in the back room. He's here. There you go. Uh, yes. So, all of the usual people. Stuart's here. Fantastic. There we are. Everybody's here. So, hi, everybody. So, what are we doing today for people other than gareth who don't yet know <laughs> what are you doing <laughs> what are you doing what are uh, you going with we are of course going to be looking through after effects and um yes. i've i've spent a lot of time making mogurts in the past uh year or so um in fact longer than that they've been around for since i think 2017 That's um nice. but for me a lot of their big sort of enhancements, improvements. They all came about around uh, the end of 2018 for the, the 2019 release of Adobe stuff. Uh, and I had a lot of fun recompiling and making a lot of things. And I've made a lot of title designs and um, all sorts of fun typographic things and got very heavily invested in it um, throughout all of lockdown last year. So that was kind of my, my lockdown baby, uh, making a whole set of titles and things. But there was always one thing that was missing, um, and that was the ability to easily add in uh, extra sort of images and other things when you hand it off to either a client or to, you know, if you sell them to people and they want to um, go and customize them themselves. And thankfully, uh, they released an update at the end of last year, I believe they announced it. And it. I think it was it went live beginning of this year or some, something like that. Maybe that was when I got the, the install for it. Um, and I've been sitting around waiting to try and finally get my hands on playing with this media replacement tool, um, which is a way that we can easily add in images and swap out videos and assets for After Effects templates. Um, and so, yeah, I've been having a having a bit of fun playing around with it. And throughout the next 90 minutes, um, I'm going to try and recreate something that I've created recently, which was a lot of fun. Um, and uh, yeah, we can uh, hopefully go through and, and take it quite tutorially and um I'll, I'll run you through my idea on on what we're doing yeah okay so let's jump in first of all with um what i was doing previously so uh as you know i make videos on my youtube channel about photography and one of the things that i do throughout my videos is i show the photos and i've previously done that like this so i've got here these are just two images stacked on top of each other or rather it's the same image but if we have a look in our effects control, actually, let me show you how it, how it works first. Um, okay. So in our timeline, we just click play. Ooh, let's go here. And all it does is it pops on the image and then continues on with the rest of the video. So the way this is originally made is just two images stacked on top of each other um, with a bit of scaling applied and some keyframes. So if we zoom in here, this is uh, just I think going from 90% to 95% and then back to 90 and you just get that little pop effect and that's kind of it really and then this one below is the same image but I've applied a tint and I've just applied the same tint to map the black point to a white and the white point to a white and it simulates this white background. And there's a reason why I've done it as the same image twice it's because it makes it incredibly easy when we open our project and let's find a photo to drop in. And let's go, let's just find anything here. So let's drop in an image into our project. 
And so when we drop in an image, all I have to do is hover over the timeline, hold option, drop it in, and it replaces both images with the same one, but it simulates yeah. this white background. If I did that with a color block or anything, it wouldn't actually replace that footage correctly and it would end up putting the same photo. So that's the reasoning behind it. And we just got a bit of audio tied to it. This has worked wonders for about four or five years now uh, using this same method, but I'm beginning to feel like it's a little bit stale and I'd like to have a little bit more flexibility. So I've made a Moga version, which quite literally looks almost identical like this <laughs> with a slightly updated shutter sound. So this is now from direct from my R5 rather than my Fuji X-H1. So that's that was my first sort of task of uh, getting to know the media replacement tool. I was like, okay, let me just make this first because I can replace what I already know and I'll make something that has a little bit more customization. So I've tied it in with my titles and I've got all my different themes if I wanted to. So I could link in with all the different themes that match up with all of my uh, title designs that I have. So I've got a handful of options here. I can add in imagery so I can just drop it straight over onto the media replacement and might be lagging a little bit whilst we're sharing the screen, but that will then replace the image. There we go. Um, and now I can work with this and I can set the scale of the image and I can take off the background if I wanted to, or I could pull in the background. Again, these are all built in and based off of the back end of my title designs. So yeah. we've got a seamless approach here. Uh, but taking this further, I'd like to be able to convert this into maybe having multiple layouts. So we could have multiple images and I could maybe have a drop down. I could say this is a two up or this is a four up and we could start to have more editorial looking image layouts and um, and other things. So that's that's the direction I want to take these moguts in. So first of all, what I'm yeah, going to yeah. share with you in After Effects is how I made this. Um, and we should be able to run through that pretty quick. And then we will jump on to this little nugget that I made, uh, which is like a little title thing, which simulates a VHS effect, uh, adds in titles. And let's just play that back first of all. Hopefully this isn't too loud. So a very simple little thing. And of course we can replace the uh, video footage and we can add in titles. Um, so we can call it Tony's Trains. And I've created a little um, aspect ratio selection so we can have the original full screen. We could go for a letterboxing option or I quite like this five by four rounded frame uh, view of things. If we wanted to add a bit of color correction, uh, I've got in some LUTs and things that I've got linked in with my Lumetri. You can also apply Lumetri effects directly over the titles. And then further, further control of how much of a effect we want to apply. So I've called this the RGB chaos and uh, we can slide between the different effects that we're seeing um, of this sort of VCR VHS look and the amount of noise that we want to apply um, and even background control. So that's something that I had a lot of fun making and uh, we will go through and show how I made that from a purely blank clip into this sort of look. Okay. So. Well, just before we start, because we've got a few things to unwrap there for people who who aren't as au fait with uh, Moguts as we are, of course. So it's starting off with what a Moga is, which is a, a motion graphics template. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, Gareth, uh, <laughs> Gareth in the chat has said, uh, was there a round table to come up with the MOGA acronym, <laughs> which is which is pretty good? Probably is the answer. <laughs> I, I always just, I think it just sounds like a food. It's like um, some sort of dairy-free yogurt. It's yeah. Well, that's originally I, I remember because I was I was on staff when when that came out, and I can remember that actually being um, people said it's MOGA rhymes with yogurt. Yeah, that was the way it was actually put out in the first place. So. Definitely, and, and 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 these are in. I, I guess we ought to tell everybody why these things are important, right? Why mogats? I mean, apart from the fact they're very useful, why they're important? Do you want to spell out what kind of or, or give people? Yeah, an idea maybe why I could, they're important. I'll uh, 
I'll share how it is with titles. So, for example, say we've got a timeline here, and um, yeah. for the sake of uh, having something to look at, let's just drop in a bit of a clip. Um, maybe not one of my face. Let's go for something like this. So let's put that in my project. So let's say we're building a timeline up and we've got video footage and we've got everything, you know, regular editor stuff and people are working on this. And then they want to add in titles. Now, of course, traditionally, if you wanted animated titles and you wanted something a little bit more uh, specific, you would have to go into After Effects, create your titles, know After Effects for one thing, um, and go and then, you know, animate things, code things, uh, create all your different layouts and stuff. Whereas now what yeah, you can so do is you could partner with a designer who knows After Effects, have them create a template file such as this, and we can scale this to any duration. And now these are some titles that I've created and they've got all my animation that I'd like. So I can just type in here London and this is my placeholder, big text here, like this big hit, big text here. <laughs> um, so we can add in, actually I quite like it in caps. Let's do more big uh, text to demo things like this. Okay, and then we click off, that's going to update it all. And I've built in some theme designs. So again, you could imagine this could be linked with corporate uh, style guides and other things. Or it could just be that you want some fresh look of whatever it is that you're working on. Um, and you've got all this sort of easy to use customization. We can change the fonts, we can change the coloring manually, and we don't ever have to open After Effects. So everything can just sit in this one little, um, you know, Mogur pot. <laughs> and we can share the Mogur uh, moving um, around. Um, share the Mogur. And of course, what we've what you've created there are what I would refer to as user configurable uh, parameters. So things that you can, because I like long words, <laughs> but things essentially that a user could go ahead and edit. So if they get a lower third, as you've got there, and they see there's a typo, or they need to just change it, they need to have different instances of it. If they were doing maybe something that, let's say, different locations, for example, you had something where you had a moment in London and then you were going to Sydney, and then you were going to Abu Dhabi or wherever, you could change those things yourself and not have to render out new things, right? Yeah, definitely. So I've got a, a whole host of different lower third options. Uh, so here's one that I use quite frequently. And I can just add in two layers of text. I've created different options if we wanted, um, say, this bouncing style, uh, adjust my titling, subtitling, and the icon that we've got. So let's say I'm, I don't know, uh, let's say a plane. And I've got this icon here for a plane and I could put in my flight details. And then when we play it back, it has this animation effect that I've built and a randomization of the text. Um, I don't know if that's playing back smoothly for you or not. It might be lagging a little bit. Um, but we then have this animated effect. You know, we're getting it. And uh, there we go. It's super smooth to then drop in these titles with really no sort of headache involved. And even if you do know After Effects, and of course, you know, I made these, it's so refreshing for me to be able to build up a timeline to just drop in something that I know that is consistent every single time. And I've stress tested it to make sure that it can work in a number of different ways. And it's always going to match the same styling and narrative. There's no inconsistencies on things. I've built in additional features, such as if I'm using a uh, narrower aspect ratio, I can bump things up so that it just takes up the space correctly. So things are always positioned in the same place. Um, everything's always ready and set for me to go. And yet there's enough flexibility that I can move things around. I can scale them longer. I can mm. do all of these things. Um, and that's just with the power of the, the Mogut, which yeah. is uh, yeah a brilliant file format. It is. I mean, do you know, that's one of the things that I really like about you and that impresses me about you is that you are very, very user centric, even if that user is just yourself and like stress testing something, will it work in this situation? Because you're making it so that it has real utility for you mm -hmm. or whoever else uses it. You know, that's the 
that's the thing. It's great that you do that, that you test that you test out all of those different things. Mm. I use these uh, all the time for showing keyboard shortcuts in my tutorials. Mm-hmm. So I need something that, and I have different configurations for um, some of the use nested elements that can show keyboard shortcuts quickly. So all we have to do is type in what the shortcut is. But I've, my level of thinking is nowhere near as 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 brilliantly user centric as yours is. Um, <laughs> really good. I mean, it's. Uh, it's always great when people notice that because um, it is something that I do pride myself on um, when I was working in design agencies and even if I was the only designer on a project, I just knew what it was like when you were a freelancer who arrived at the scene, you know, things get busy, you hire in freelancers or, you know, being a freelancer myself at times, going in and if things aren't organized, if things aren't in a easy to understand manner at a time when things are so stressful and rapid paced, um, you do yourself a favor later down the line if you reopen a project and you're like, what does this do again? Um, so yeah, being organized and uh, adding in all your your comments on your code and things like that, um, yeah. being regimented and strict, it, it's it's good for you, but it's good for other people as well. Definitely, absolutely, yeah, pays dividends, I think. Yeah, yeah. absolutely, definitely. Yeah. All right, so let's uh, let's jump into After Effects, and I will quickly whip up this photo one, and then we'll go and have some fun with the uh, the video effects that I created. So I'm going to assume that um, people have a little bit of an understanding on video editing um, to some extent, and uh, and we'll take it as a little bit of an introduction ish into After Effects and uh, how Mogus work. So first of all, in our project panel, um, I'm just going to create a new composition down here and I'm going to give it some, uh, let's call this one live uh, photo. Um, And I'm going to set my dimensions. So I use 17 by 9 uh, DCI 4K for my footage and my title is going forward. Um, I'm going to set this one to be, I don't want five seconds. I'm going to go for three seconds. Uh, That's generally what I do as a standard for within my vlogs. Okay, so we've got our our standard canvas here, and this is where we're going to drop in our layers and, and things like that. What I've found, and let me just change my essential graphics actually to, what did I call it? Live photo. Okay. So what I found with the media replacement is in order for it to work successfully, you have to start with an actual image. So with a, a JPEG or a PNG um, to go from. And so I've created a JPEG that fits my maximum dimensions that I would want to use in uh, Premiere. Yeah. Oh, I've saved that in a different location. Let's open this up. So this is where it helps to be organized. You know exactly where all your things are. And there we go. So I've created this uh, document here. And we're looking a bit large. There we go. So this is very simply a background layer, a bit of text, and it is set to, I believe, what are we on? 2600, is it? Uh, 3600 pixels by 1920. So those are giving enough space at the top and bottom for a a 4096 by 2160 video frame. So 4K, yeah. Bit of a border. Um, And if we drop that image in, which I've already exported out as a PNG, which will be in dynamic titles, placeholder assets. So quite simply, it's just a plain PNG like this, and I can drop that in. So now this sits, and this is the maximum dimensions that I would want to use for a photo. It doesn't mean that every photo is going to show like this. I may drop in a portrait one. I may drop in a square one. Uh, This just is my maximum parameters. And so from here, we can then open up our essential graphics tool, which if you don't have it open, just go to window, essential graphics. And this is where we're going to create the MOGA. I can quite literally drag and drop in the image and give this one a name. So let's call this one image. And we can set some parameters. So um, I'll do scale to fit just to make sure that it shows the photo in its correct aspect ratio all of the photo rather than scaling to fill this gray space. We don't necessarily need to fill the whole thing. And 
I could quite literally just save and export this. And now when we open in Premiere, we'll be able to uh, replace that image. But let's add in some actual After Effects animation. So if we twirl down our effect controls here and let's set from around five frames is probably where we want our scaling to be. So I'm just going to toggle on keyframes and this is our eventual end output. And let's go. How do we want to start? We want to go, ooh, maybe not too much. Let's go 105 as the maximum growth point and 95. So these three keyframes, so it's going to start the image at 95. It's going to pop a little bit larger and then it's going to drop back to 100. And in fact, I want that to be a little bit quicker. So this is how it's going to look. Bing, just like that. Very simple, little animation built in. And I could even add in some extra closing animations if I wanted to. And I could drop in other um, information that I may want to, such as titles and things like that. You could really take this as far as you want, but I'm going to keep this demo pretty straightforward. Um, likewise, we want to drop in our sound effect. So I have where I'm looking, camera. And let's drop that in. So Gareth's ye yelling for f 9 the keyframes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm uh I'm very much one to uh to show all of the menu things. I'll I'll use my keyboard shortcuts when I'm running around. But when it comes yeah. to demoing, it's um it is more helpful the way you're doing it. It, it is. is quite a, a challenge, isn't it? Like I find yeah. like I've been doing um I've actually been doing a lot of teaching with Adobe uh on the side on things and it's so hard to not jump ahead and just go and whiz yeah. through and then say, oh, actually, this was this was how you did it. Um, so yeah, I, uh, I have to sit on my hands at times um, just to really, really show things. Um, anyway, yeah. so I've just dropped in this uh, audio recording of the camera shutter. And now if we play that, there we go. So that is quite literally the, um, the most we would add in. We could even add in a new solid uh, background. So let's just call this one background and let's set our color to white. And OK, let's drop this to the bottom layer. And you know what? We could even give the user customization to adjust the fill. So I like to drop in a fill with an effect. You can do it within the original um, if you did a shape layer or something like that. Uh, but I like to use the effects and let's because you can you can find out, can't you, what is supported in your timeline, right? When you're making a mode. Yes, you can. There is an option, solo supported properties. Yeah. There we go. And that will show you all the things that do work um, within the layer that you've got selected. So I've just dropped in this background color and I'm going to call this one background. And I could even add in some extra customization if I wanted choice of that. Um, but I'm not going to make this one too complex. We'll jump into the next Mogut and uh, do something a little bit more complex. And so this is how it looks. Save our document. Uh, let's give this a name. Live photo. Save it again. And then export motion graphics template. And now we should get a little pop up and I'll drop it into one of my existing uh, Creative Cloud libraries. So let's go animate title was five and give it some keywords as well. Um, just separate with a comma. Again, you can just add as many as you want on here. Um, so let's jump through that. That has now saved it across the interwebs into my uh, Creative Cloud. And if we go into my libraries, We've got this live photo that I've just created and let's create a bit of space on the timeline. I can now drag and drop this in. You see it's brought with it the video and the audio section. And there is our media ready and waiting. And all I do now is take the image that I want to add and drop it in. There we go. It's a great way to deploy them as well via Creative Cloud Libraries because, of course, if you're working with a wider team, irrespective of where they are on the planet, yeah, if you've given them access to that library, they can use exactly the same templates. Definitely, yeah. And likewise, internationalization. If um, 
as long as I don't adjust the, uh, so if we go into our, oh, we are in the edit, as long as I don't adjust the number of um, items here that you can customize, mm -hmm. if I made some changes, so let's say I actually want the animation to be a little bit longer, and I make some changes and I save again. Um, so, in fact, let's do, let's do that. So save, export out. And I'm actually just going to give it the same name. Hit OK. Now if we go back to Premiere, and we see our libraries. So you see, that was the original one. I could delete that from my library. And the new one, as long as it's not changed the number of things, I can drag this over, hold Option, and replace the title. And if I had text in my titles, or if I had imagery, as in this case, it will replace it and keep it up to date, or it should do in a moment. Uh, there we go with yeah. those um, adjustments that I'd made to the, the MoGuT, so. Yeah, because that's, to my mind, that's the only shortcoming with with MoGuTs is the fact that you have to, you know, if, you, if somebody says, oh, can we make it so you can animate this or you can change the speed of that and you go, mm -hmm. yeah, but then you've got to export another one. And if you've got different properties, I mean, you can still drag them in in the way you did, but you've got to still got to go through that whole management thing, which is a different. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. And of course, there are times when, you know, you could look at this and you can say, well, why are we doing this approach when this method worked seamlessly for years and is incredibly rapid and just as easy to change? Well, I would say the same. If I was doing just this as a single image, um, then yeah, that's great. But knowing that I want to push this further and I want to build in some extra control, such as with my titles, with theming options and different layouts and the ability to... You know, imagine having images that came on and you sort of moved them around the screen where you brought in layers and tiles and added in titles and had like an interactive newspaper looking title slate. Uh, you could have a lot of fun with that. And you do need to use something like Mogus just to, to build that functionality. So this is definitely the, the bare bones approach that I'm going to start with. Um, and now let me move on to something a little bit more fun and energetic with... Uh, with these titles. Yes. So, Tony's Trains. Um, so, this I is... I do like trains, it's true. Yeah, I mean, trains, best form of transport. I've, uh, I've made that very public on the internet. Big train fan. Yeah. Um, right, let's close down these. So, I do have them already pre-made. Uh, if we run out of time, uh, so I'm going to try and keep an eye on the time, but if we if we start to run out of time, I can run back through and we can unpack how it was built. But I'm going to attempt to build it from the ground up uh, within the time available. Well, I'll keep an eye on the time for you, so you concentrate uh, on, the, on the works. Let's go for it. All right, yeah. so of course we are going to start with a new composition, um, pretty much all the same setup again, and we're going to call this one uh, Train. Actually, we're not going to call it train titles because we want to replace the media at some point with something else. So, um, slate travel video titles. Yeah. And I'm going to make this one a five second one. You could set this to any duration. You could even add in responsive time uh, if you wanted to scale things down. Although I have noticed you can't actually, with video uh, replacement, you can't scale it any longer. It's only scaling down. Photo replacement, you can scale up and down as, as much as you want. Um, but we're just going to make one with a five second transition for now. And our first stage is to drop in some video. So I've got this little miniature railway uh, clip here. And let me scale this up. So I'm actually, I'm using the proxy file rather than the, the full size just so that it's smooth. Um, but of course you could drop in a, a original 4K footage if you wanted to. And this You've got the time. <laughs> <laughs> this uh, this is actually a model railway in um, in the SC Maglev Museum in Japan, um, and it looks like this. So it's this cute little place. It's a massive uh, model railway set, um, and I thought it would lend itself quite well to this VHS effect. Um, but again, you know, you could get a plug in. You could go and do all this you know, easy effects and one time click. Um, and you could make the same thing, but I think it's more fun to get to understand how things were built and what went into the process of creating an effect because then it opens up creativity and ideas of, hmm, well, if I knew how to make that, what else can I make? 
rather than just always relying on existing plugins and things. So um, first of all, uh, I should point out this footage is um, the color is already a little bit off uh, just because the white balance is slightly wrong. So let's add in uh, just a quick fix. I wouldn't actually build this into the um, the title. I wonder because... if the white balance was set to something like tungsten or daylight if it had... No, not daylight, low light. Because that's yes. the thing when it goes blue, isn't it? It's compensating for too much yellow. Yeah. So yeah. this, um, I think, given the, the room that this model railway was in, it uh, transitions from a simulated nighttime into morning. Uh -huh. and so there could quite literally have been a, uh, a blue cast across the room uh, as right. I filmed it. But it, it does look a bit odd. So I'm just going to make a few adjustments here <clears throat> just with a illumetry so that we see it like that. Okay, so this is our, our main media clip. And let's now open up in our essential graphics the, uh, what did I call it, a slate. I've got so many in here. Why? There, is a few. there it is at the bottom. Uh, so slate video titles, and let's just call this one live so that I don't get confused in Premiere in a moment. Um, okay. And we are just going to drop first things in the uh, the video. So rename that to media so that it makes sense. And scale to fill is what we're looking for so that it fills the whole scene. And our first stage, so we're in this composition. Uh, composition, our first stage is actually to pre-compose this so that we can then apply effects over the same media file without duplicating or tripling that media file. So we're going to call this one, uh, let's call this one media replacement. Move all attributes in, that's fine. Okay. So now we have this composition, which is a sort of a, a grouped canvas and it contains this. So therefore, we've only got the file in once. And the first thing we're going to do is we are actually going to triple this. So for the VHS effect, we actually need to split the RGB values ever so slightly uh, to that lower quality um, effect of things. And we do that with, oh, where's my cursor gone? Uh, so we do that with the um, what was it called? Channel. Shift channels, I believe. Drop that in there. And let's turn this on. So our uh, shift channels, which we've dropped over onto our clip. And we're going to only enable a red or green or a blue channel for an individual instance of the composition. So in this case, we have the video file that looks like this, and it's taking the red from the red, the green from the green. So we're actually just going to turn off the greens, and we're going to turn off the blues. So now we should see the red view of things. And we're also going to set this layer, the blending mode. Uh, we are going to set it to uh, linear dodge. Okay. And now if we duplicate this, and again, so now the top one we're going to leave is red. This second one, if we go down into our effects and we open up, let's turn red off and let's turn green on. So oh, clever. I see. Yeah, yeah. Now, third one, we're going to turn red off again and do blue. OK, so now you see that it looks back to how it did previously because we've rebuilt the image. So we've separated out the red, green and blue channels and we've now rebuilt it into their individual channels, which means that we can have some fun to move things around. So I'm going to build in a transform. And I'm actually going to do this with a, um, a drop down effect. So of course, I could just move things around and I could shift off the axis. You see how that's creating this little effect. Yep. But I'm going to create a new layer in my composition. And I think this is good practice to do. Um, with an adjustment layer. I'm going to call this one local controls. And within here, this is where I'm going to have things that will control what's happening within this composition. And uh, from within here, 
we can create a uh, expression control and we've got drop down controls or we've got sliders um, and all sorts of different things. So I'm going to go for slider. And if we open our effects, this is where we have our slider control. And I'm just going to call this one, what did I call it before? RGB chaos. OK. And now we can drag this slider into our essential graphics. So these are the controls that we're building for the user. And rename it up here just to match. And we have the option to edit the range. So I'm going to set the scale of just a 0 to 10. And we're going to set a default value of 5. So now we have this slider and at the moment <clears throat> changing this slider it doesn't do anything because we're not controlling anything with it but if we go into our top channel here which i believe is the red one and if we hold option and click on the stopwatch we can code in just a little bit of information and don't be intimidated by the fact that it's talking in code you can always uh pick whip equip yeah various things um although i am actually just going to type it out and uh, this is how I like to think when it comes to coding. I always like to set a, um, a variable first. So we're going to set the uh, chaos control equals, and it's this comp dot layer. Oh, can't type. Can't see my keyboard, that's why. Uh, this comp dot <laughs> layer, and we're going for local controls. And we are then going to be doing the uh, effect. And it's the first effect. OK, so that's this slider. Um, OK. Yep. That is right. Or do I need to write a <clears throat> RGB chaos? I think you're OK. I have to look up stuff quite often with expressions. I'm not that uh, guy. Double check, double check before we do. No, it is effect name name of effect. Yeah, where are we going? Uh, da, 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 da. It's the name of effect in here, which I have called RGB chaos, and then it is the first control of that effect. So it's this slider. Okay, yeah, so yeah. that's going to set a um, a value to this chaos control, and then what we're going to do is we're going to set the RGB value to be, uh, or sorry, the, um, the position value to be related to this chaos control. So as we adjust this, we want to adjust our RGB value. So okay. we're going to set an X position equals um, chaos control times by, actually, let's do this the other way around. So we have our default, which is 40, 2048 minus and then in our maths we're going to do chaos control times by two so that should give us a value of whatever slider this is times by two just for a visual effect and our y position equals uh, 1080 and i'm actually not going to affect the y position we end it with a array X pause and Y pause. Okay. So now, depending on what we adjust with this slider, it's going to multiply it by my times two, and it's going to apply the X position, which is this value, and the Y position, which I'm actually leaving as standard. So now you see that as I adjust this slider, we're seeing one of these channels move over. Yeah. So now I can copy Never. this expression. <clears throat> And we can apply that onto only the third one. We don't need it on the second one because uh, we want our individual middle channel to be fine. So let's go, where was it? Position. And likewise, the same. But this time, instead of it being a minus, we're going to add the value. So now, as we adjust our slider, you see how it's spanning things much wider and narrower. You can see that effect. And if I wanted to, I could change the um, the scale of how much this applies. So if I change that to a 5, for example, and this one, let's change that to a 5. And if we now adjust this, we'll have a greater amount Much of more. adjustment yeah, yeah. happening. 
Um, so in fact, I actually quite like the five. I think that works quite well. We can really accentuate what's happening here. So those are about as complex as we're going to get in the, the coding side of things. Um, famous last words. <laughs> I am um, actually, I'm going to just lift this down off the shelf. I, I picked up this book just a few weeks ago that helps with learning After Effects expressions. Okay, yeah. nice. Neat. Yeah. Is it, um, has it remained up to date? Because I know After Effects moves quite fast in terms of updates and things. It does, but the language doesn't move that much. And it's an After Effects, if anything, makes it more forgiving because it's based on JavaScript, right? So if you know JavaScript, then you're okay with working with that. And it's done things where people used to have expression failures before would be in things like failing to terminate a statement with a semicolon. Mm -hmm. And now After Effects is much more forgiving about that because it yeah. knows, you know, a new line is effectively a new statement, so it replaces it with. Yeah, definitely. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. So no, that, that is, uh, expressions like that, I mean, only it would be some of the properties, of course, you'd need to keep checking the reference for that that change. So when they add in new properties, it would do it, but the actual construction of the language itself is, mm. is, is what it is. I remember when I first uh, started playing around with After Effects and I discovered that you could code within it and I started, you know, doing bits of code and I, look, I know um, a number of different languages from building websites and mm. uh, I just kind of went with it and was just coding things. I was like, it's working, but I don't really know what I'm coding in. I was like, it's a little bit JavaScript, it's a little bit jQuery-like. Um, there are elements of it that are similar to PHP. And um, yeah. then I eventually discovered um, when they did an official conversion, I guess, from what was it previously? Expression script. And it's now yeah. officially full JavaScript. Um, full is in uh, on a localized scale. You can't be referencing external files and whatever. If I'm correct, I think it, it references. So here's something, here's a piece of homework uh, for everyone. It references ECMA 262, the standard ECMA 262, which is the European Computer Manufacturer. I'm not looking this up, by the way. I know this um, <laughs> for the European Commun Computer Manufacturers Association. Lang it's a language structure. So 262 is that particular thing. So when there was Flash, and in fact, yeah. ActionScript still does support that, and that's based on ec ECMA script 262, ECMA 262. And yeah. I'm pretty sure that. If expressions do too. All right. There, there we go. go. I'm great in pub quizzes. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I used to be a quiz master uh, when did I was you? in. Yeah, I did. Yeah. Um, we'll have to have a host quiz. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. Uh, yeah. All right. I'm, I'm not going to add in another effect over this. So I've just searched into my effects and presets and I've got here the wave warp and I'm just going to apply it onto my local controls, which is an effect. Uh, sorry, it's an adjustment layer. So it will apply to everything that happens below. And what on earth is going on here? We've got this all wavy, muddled look of things. So this is an effect that's just going to distort things around and um, have that looking like that, which is not what we want. So we're going to change this to square variety. And we're going to set the direction sideways. And we are going to adjust the height of things. So we're getting, how big do we need to go? Probably about 800 or so. So we're going to be getting this sort of blocky look. Remember the old days where the tape was just yeah, a little bit, yeah, a little bit funky. Um, the height, because we've turned it sideways, this is related to the the uh, effect that we're having, how much it's moving across. So I'm only going to do four. That's a pretty good. And the speed is, if we go through here, the speed will be how much this wave is going to be cycling down through our composition. Now, so speed of one is is probably fine to be honest. Um, but again, we can adjust these and change these. And let's pin it to all edges so that we cover up these uh, transparent areas. So now if we play back, we should have um, our effect applied over all three of those channels. A little bit laggy on my end, but it, it is happening. It is working. No, it's it. And uh, there we go. So that is that's one of the effects I wanted to apply. And let's also add a bit of grain to the film. So we do that with some noise. And again, drag that, drop it over. And noise amount, let's go for something like 10. And likewise, I can drag this noise into my essential graphics because I want to give the user the ability to add even more grain if they wanted to, or even less. In fact, let's go for something like 20. That's, that's good. And we call it grain because we're going for analog. It's not digital. And cool. So this is how we want our 
um, our effects to look through everything. We could even add in a title. So let's add in title up here. And I'm going to do this fairly rough so it's not going to be centralized. Um, add title here. And it's remembered the font that I was using yesterday, which is actually industry. And you can get that on Adobe fonts. And let's just make this nice and large. Just like that. And let's set this as um, 2048 by 1080. So we just got it centralized. Oh, I'm being Rick rolled in the chat. Thanks, people. <laughs> <laughs> I just asked Jackie never to give up because she's saying I could learn fresco, and uh, but not not this. And I think she could. Everybody <laughs> could, right? Yeah, it, uh, you might have to rewatch things and um, you know pause where you want because, uh, of course, I am kind of flying through this at some speed and trying to trying to show some uh, idea of how things were built. But hopefully, you can you can get the gist enough of it to know that you could pause things and, and come back and, and rewatch things. So um, I've just added in a, a text layer here, which will be our title, and I've just added a, a placeholder text. And if we twirl down and open our text, I can drag in my source text. And because this sits on top of things, I'm actually going to add the hierarchy at the top. So let's just call this one text. And of course, at any point within creating your composition, you can always go into your essential graphics and you can change things. Um, so if I wanted to, I could change it to this, add Tony here, or, you know, um, there we go. Tony needs a title. So I've got one. I'm a lord. <laughs> <laughs> so that is uh, that's how we do it. And we can edit our properties if we want to give the user some extra customization. So I usually like to enable custom font selection. We could do sizing, um, although being a little bit of a control freak, I do find that sometimes um, someone's decision on what size a title should be may not be the most aesthetically pleasing. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, you don't want to overdo the uh, the options and overwhelm someone. Uh, so we've now enabled this title and it sits in there and I've sit it, uh, I've sat it down underneath the adjustment layer. So we're having that noise and we're having the um, the wave applied over that title, but it doesn't quite fit the bill just yet. I think we need to add a little bit of blur to it. Um, so if we go back to our effects and let's go blur. Um, so Gareth in the chat, by the way, uh, earlier on was slightly worried about the fact that giving the user control over fonts would end up with Comic Sans everywhere, which uh, which is a worry. But <laughs> And yeah. strangely enough, in the chat as well, uh, Joel was just saying, can the user choose the font? And they actually asked that just at the moment that you actually delivered that line. There you go. There we go. It's um, There is some magic. In, there is. in After Effects and in Behance, it seems. We are seems so. <laughs> collectively <laughs> transcribing information across. Um, okay, I've just added a little bit of a blur here. And now you see it's starting to fit this bill of, um, you know, this more analog style, the tape film that we're, we're looking for. I'm just going to save it. And um, all looks pretty great. So we're, we're slowly building this up. And we've got this effect that's happening. And... We're going through uh, all the things. And one thing that I thought would be an extra sort of touch to add into this would be the ability to set a um, a frame or like a, an aspect ratio. Yeah. So uh, I had to pre-compose this. And we're going to select all three of these. And we're going to go to pre-compose. So all three of my compositions. So now we've double nested our composition. And I'm going to call this one VHS effect. And now all of those effects, they still sit, but they're in their own um, composition. And for extra clarity, I could even relabel these. And I could call this one the red channel. I could call this one the green channel. And this one the blue. Um, cool. makes no odds really, but it just makes it a little bit easier that if I come back to this at a later stage, 
I'll know what the hell's going on because I've uh, separated them out. And let's go into our main composition. So now we've got our our double nested composition, so the VHS effect, which includes the media replacement, which includes the, the media image in the first place. And these are all linked up with the essential graphics. So everything is still nested deep within and you can just pull out which controls you want to have effect with. So what I want to create now is a aspect ratio. Um, and we've actually got a little bit of an error happening. And that is likely one of these is saying it's not this comp because I've now nested it into another comp. So we can take uh, these local controls or I could reference back. Um, should we reference back? Yeah, let's reference back. It makes it a bit easier. Keep all the controls in the same place. So let's go. Uh, what did I call it? Slight video titles. And I believe that needs to be a lowercase c. There we go. So we now have all of our controls in the one place. And uh, we're going to utilize these a little bit more with even more uh, control that we've got. So much fact, more showing there by the looks of it. In... Because it's also on this top layer. Uh -huh, there you go. And Tim was just asking a quick question while you address that. Um, and I think the answer to it is no, but you can't create custom drop down menus as expression controls, can you, for Mogus? Yes, you can. And that's what can I'm... Uh, yes. Ooh. So this was a massive deal for me. Um, so before I released my titles last year, I'd been using them on my channel for for ages. And okay. I was using little bits of hacks. I was, um, for example, with icons. So I, I previously used to use it to show my social profiles. So I have my Instagram, YouTube, or whatever. And I would toggle the icon on and off. And it was a case of saying, okay, Instagram on, YouTube off, Twitter off, Twitch off, all of these extra ones off. And if I need to change it, be like, okay, Instagram off, YouTube on. And it worked for me because I knew how it was built and I understood what was required of customizing it. But I always knew that if I gave them to an end user, it would easily go wrong. And you'd accidentally yeah. export it. You've got two logos over the top of each other. And then I think it was in Mogut version either 1.6 or 2.6. I remember a 6 being involved somewhere. Uh, they supported dropdowns. And now you can choose a dropdown and you can make your selection of it um, within there. So, so I, I was unaware of that. Yeah, it's yeah. A, a massive feature. Um, yeah. Really, really useful. So let's go back to our top parent. Um, so we've got our effects. And I want to add in a aspect ratio. Now the way that I'm going to do that, and there are a number of different ways that you could do this, but this is how I I was kind of trial and erroring and uh, I came to a solution that worked quite well. Is I'm going to create a shape layer. So if we go up to our top and let's do a rounded rectangle. Actually let's do a standardized rectangle and add some roundness. Let's show it that way. And I am going to just draw a shape. And the dimensions that I need for this shape layer, rectangle one, is rectangle path dimensions I need. I have forgotten, so let's work it out. So what are we on? 4096 times by, I'm oh, sorry, divided by five. Uh, so eight. Oh, Joe, mm -hmm. I think you're the son I never had. You're just like reaching for all the right stuff. <laughs> okay. 3276, but I want to actually add a bit of frame. You know what? To save doing the maths, let's just copy it from the previous one that I made. So aspect ratio base. Let's copy it here and let's paste it in. So this is essentially a shape layer that I've renamed aspect ratio base. And it's actually got multiple shapes in here. So you remember previously it just said rectangle one. Well, I've now renamed yeah. it. So we've got a shape here that is 17 by 9, which is the full aspect ratio of the composition. We've got one here, which is the 2.35 to 1, which is your sort of standardized cinema um, widescreen. And then we've got this fun one with the 5x4, um, which is this centralized. And I've added, if we open up the path, I've added a little bit of roundness um, just to those corners so we can accentuate it massively. We could go for a circular one if we wanted. Um, and that sits like this. 
And within these, I believe I've got some expressions which are broken at the moment. So we will come back to that. But ignore ignore this error because I've just copied it over from the uh, the previous one. Gareth, by the way, is just throwing into the chat that you can double click the selected shape button to auto fill a shape to the size of your comp. That is a helpful little feature. It is Good a helpful know. thing. Yeah, it's uh, it's funny. I I go through phases of using After Effects really heavily for mm. months at a time. I build all the assets that I need and, and things, and then I'll then go and use them in my video projects and and work with them and and have them all running. And I don't touch After Effects for ages. And then I come back um, and you have to sort of relearn things, which is why it's always good, especially when you're doing your code, uh, to add in comments and just let yourself know and keep things organized and labeled and named. Um, yeah, I can't stress enough how helpful that is. Yeah. Well, I mean, you would know that from your web design uh, days is that, you know, when you work on a site, you don't work on it every week. So you could kind of get a build out and then you make some changes and those comments are the things that save you in the long run because you don't have to decipher why you did something a certain way right yeah definitely definitely okay so i've just cleared those um effects that we didn't want happening and let's run through all right so we've got our aspect ratio base and again at the moment this is this is doing nothing um so we've got nothing happening here but we're going to create a drop down menu to give the user choice of which aspect ratio they'd like to choose. And of course, I could add in extra shapes and give them more choice if I wanted to, but we're going to keep it simple with just three. Uh, so first of all, we need to link our, um, our layer to the aspect ratio base. And at the moment, all of these are completely visible. But if we turn them off, so let's say we turn off this one, our 17 by 9. And do do do. Oh, nope, don't do that. Let me move this. Can't see. Why can't I adjust? Okay, whatever. Um, we, sorry, I'm going to set mat rather than apply this. So if we go into our effect and choose set mat, apply that to our top composition, and we're going to take our shape dynamics of the chosen layer and apply that to our sort of bounding box, if you will, of this top layer. So now whatever this layer is doing, which at the moment we've got the two shapes active, but if we had it like this, with only the one shape active, we're going to have a cropped view. And if we had a second rectangle, we're going to have this view. If we had the full one, we're going to have this view. So of course, what we need to build in is the ability for the user to choose which of these rectangles we would like to be the active one, which will affect our composition above and its view. Uh, so unfortunately, there's no way of choosing if a layer is visible or not. But what we can do is choose the opacity. Uh, so within each of these, and we're going to do that, of course, with a drop down menu. So if we go back to our local controls and in our effects, and let's go Effect, Expression Control, drop down menu. And let's rename this one to Aspect uh, Ratio. And if we edit our menu, we have three options originally. So let's do 17 by 9. And again, in brackets, just so that the end user knows what that means. 2.35 to 1. Letterbox. And five to four rounded. Okay, so now we've created this drop down menu. And again, I can just drag this up. And let's place it. Uh, I'm going to place it above the RGB chaos. I feel like it's got some importance on the overall view of things. Um, aspect ratio. Cool. So now we have this drop box. Uh, sorry, this drop down. And again, at the moment, is not doing anything. We're just selecting things, but we need to access the data from what we input here. So yeah. the way that we'll do that is within our aspect ratio uh, base, and we're going to close these down. If we go into our contents, within each of these shapes, we're going to apply some code to our transform. 
And if we go into our opacity and again, hold option, click into these and we can say um, our, our menu. So aspect uh, menu equals, and it's again, this comp layer is local controls and the effect. Did I remember what I called it? Did I remember what I called it? Can't remember what I called it. Aspect ratio, simple enough. The effect, aspect ratio, and then it is, of course, the first one. Uh, the reason, by the way, of using the numbering, this is maybe a little bit of a, a power tip for some people, uh, because you can put in here menu, or if it was a slider, you could write slider. However, if someone opens this, uh, either in After Effects or in Premiere, in a language other than English, unfortunately, those effects don't translate across. Mm -hmm. And so where you've written slider, um, I forget what the word is in German, but it's definitely not slider. And so After Effects gets a little bit confused and it throws up errors. Whereas if you index them with the number, so this is the, the first effect or rather the first control within that, um, that local control that we created, it can then reference it and it's all fine. It's a bit of an odd one because the word effect is different in other languages, but um, After Effects is able to translate that. It's just when it comes down to these expression controls. Um, so that's right, right. that's a workaround that I found, um, which works for me. So we've set a variable for our aspect menu, um, and I could add in some notes here, and uh, we're going to do that with a double slash. So if menu is selected, choose uh, opacity. Cool. So now we're going to say, uh, and this is a, a little if command. So we're going to say if aspect menu equals, um, and then we'll give it a value. So again, because this menu item, if we went through here, we can see our indexes. And again, bear in mind that the index starts at one rather than zero, which is common for most coding. Zero based index. Yeah. 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 So starts at one, which is again, something that always trips me up because I want to do zero. I've trained my brain to yeah. think the unintuitive way. Um, but yeah, so index of one, and we're going to say if the uh, the menu is index of one, then do this thing. And we use these curly braces. So we're going to say 100% opacity, else 0% oh, opacity. Okay. So ignore the fact that that felt very intimidating. Uh, it's very straightforward doing these types of code. And in fact, you don't even have to um, write some of this out. You can always pick whip to your various uh, feature and it will label it and bring it in. But I think it's quite therapeutic and it's a good understanding to type things out and you can really feel where you're, you're doing things right and wrong. Yeah. So we're effectively saying if our aspect ratio, uh, if the menu, which is this variable we've created, if it's set to one, we're going to set the opacity of this shape layer to 100%. If it's not, we're going to set the opacity to zero. And we see it's currently at 100%. But if we change our menu and we drop it to a different one, oh, look at that. We've gone to zero. So it works. But of course, we need to change it for the other layers as well. So I can copy this and I can go into my next layer, which is the 2.35 to 1. And again, twirl down in the opacity, paste that in. And now we need to change the menu item here. So if it's number two in the menu, and we could even do the five by four and set that to number three. Now, a way that I would think of this differently, but I'm not going to confuse you further with it, is I would actually build this using an index value. So I would have this opacity count which number of layer it currently is. And then I would say if this matches up with the number of the menu, and I would just make sure that I list my menu and I list my layers in the same order. And that way I don't have to go through and edit my code and say if it's number one set to this, and then I go and change the menu and then realize, oh, it's no longer number one. Um, by doing things with an indice value, you can streamline your approach but it is a slightly different way of thinking, and I, I don't want to overwhelm you too much on that. Um, but for anyone who may be watching who's a little bit more adept at, at that type of thing, uh, get your hands on indexes and, and working in those 
numbered situa uh, numbered situations. Yeah. Cool. Have logic like Wednesdays every now and then. <laughs> So um, so we've now set our menus, and if we see here, full screen, it's activated this one. All layers are still visible, it's just the opacity has dropped. And we set our second menu, and now it's activated the opacity on this second one. And we set our third one, and it's done this. So that works beautifully, and it's exactly what I need, so I'm just going to save that. And one thing that I'd like to address is the fact that when we choose this um, aspect ratio, it's obviously got this transparency behind. Now you may like that, or you may want to solve that. Uh, I'm going to solve it. So we'll do a new solid layer, and let's just call this one uh, back, if I can spell anything correctly, background, and let's set a starting color of this, but we're also going to add an effect to it anyway. Set that behind. And let's add the effect, go to our effects and presets, um, search for fill. There we go. Let's add Philip to this and put on a color. Again, let's set the dark. Cool. And again, I can drag this up into our essential graphics. So you notice that as I'm building these, I'm not adding every customization into this essential graphics panel. I'm only adding what I want to play with. Yeah. So, so by the way, I, I'm just going to, just for the people who are talking about the centering of the text, that you wouldn't believe, Joe, how many people are upset about non centered text. What Joe's doing is Joe is, is faithfully honoring the kind of titling that went with VHS tapes because it was difficult to apply. And more often than not, it was off center. So, you should know Joe by now. It's Joe's a, Joe loves everything being just so, but this is an homage or a, or a, or, a, or a more faithful treatment. Would, would it help people if I if I went a little bit further, and I made it something like this? Does does that ease some tension? I think it might. Yeah, I think it might. Okay. But it's been like a little sub discussion going on about centering of text. It's so funny. It's funny. Um, I must admit, actually, that was something that I, I hadn't noticed as I was building it. But I knew that yeah. um, now that I have seen it, it would be the thing that I would go through the efforts of saving everything, exporting it, adding in all my keywords to the Mogurts, only to open it in Premiere Pro and think, oh, it's not central. And then have to go and do it again. Yeah. <laughs> so um, for think, brevity, Jackie, let's Jackie throw it just off. said it just wasn't quite off enough that was the thing yeah it was close enough to it but that's the way it was yeah that's in, very in days when you probably weren't even alive in those days to be honest <laughs> i i started off my my video realms with a uh, a little handy cam mini dv yeah. um yeah. or even actually no it's uh recording to vhs the first one i used uh before it got wow. the mini dv um i used to make these uh, with my brother, these little uh, like figurine type things, and we do stop yeah. motion in camera. So it'd be like start and stop, start and stop, start and stop, and just make oh, these wow. narratives. Um, and then we would do the voiceover to it by playing it back and recording it again over the tape. Um, so everything was done in camera. And it's amazing that somehow we actually managed to like export it onto actual tape at some point. Do I know wow. where the tape is? Absolutely not. <laughs> no idea. <laughs> but it's it's somewhere at my mum's house, and uh, I'd love to find it one day and, and share oh, some. Oh, maybe of these you will. It'll narratives. Be, yeah. I think I would have been about six or five at the time, um, and my brother would wow. have been like nine. Yeah. Wow, so, that's impressive. Yeah, it was uh, it was a lot of fun. Um, even used to do a lot of like um, I guess like magic work. I was always fascinated by close magic when I was younger um, and when you introduce a camera to it well, suddenly you've got control of the perspective and you can choose where the audience looks and you can you know start and stop recording and interview people but not film the answers in sync with the questions um, all sorts of fun no. those are the days there we are um, so we've adjusted our title I've added in my background layer and we've added a fill 
and we've put the fill color into our essential graphics. Uh, but we also want to add in a toggle um, because some people may want to have the transparency. They may not want to have this, this background fill. So again, we go back to our local controls and we're going to add a new expression control. And you can see, by the way, we've got all these different options here for things that you may want to do. Um, so you can set a variety of different controls depending on what you'd like to control. So I'm going to set a checkbox control. And let's again rename this. Uh, it's always good to rename your layers. I will say that at every step of the way. It's also always good to spell correctly. Um, so background toggle and let's drag this checkbox in and let's oh wow I cannot spell background today. Back was do BG. I never write the word background. Yeah I mean, BG is is it I don't know why, but it, I feel like if I'm going to shorten something, I really have to have a rationale and apply it to everything. So like if you shorten background, do you also shorten other terminology? Um, yeah. And then I start having this argument in my head and I've got like meetings about meetings of, you know, should we shorten this and should we not? And just type it out. That's my, <laughs> that's my eventual rationale. Yeah. So background toggle. Um, and I'm actually just going to copy the code that I wrote on the uh, aspect ratio base. So let's go back in, let's just pull out one of these, the transform opacity, and let's just copy this. And because the code is mostly the same, um, we're just going to adjust the name of things. Oh, let me scroll so I can see. Um, so we're going to set, yeah. let me see. Interface is too small. There we go. So we're going to call this uh, variable just background. Spelt it right. Toggle. Um, and we'll call this one uh, background toggle. There it is. And in this case, the toggle has a value of either one or zero. Um, so if the toggle is set to one, meaning that it's on, will set the opacity to be 100. Else, if the toggle is set to anything else or this control is set to anything else, we set the opacity to zero. We could, of course, change it so that it's, you know, let's demonstrate that with 30. So with the toggle currently off, the opacity is now set to 30. And if we turn it on, the opacity is now set to 100%. Um, so you can you add in all sorts of things. You could background there properly, just having a quick look. It's just I noticed something in the chat has In fact, I've called the uh, background. Did, we did spell it wrong. Wow, this is, uh, you know, if you're taking shots for every time I spelled background wrong. Um, oh man, I'm not. It's Tim. Tim, of the day. Tim, <laughs> Tim just, yeah, <laughs> I don't know, it's on a Wednesday. Uh, Tim, um, hump day for, for typing background. No, it's Tim. Yeah, Tim was on it sure. Wrong. Just blame me, Tony. Ugh. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Tim, sometimes it's it's like the the voice of um, who was that in the the BBC studio on Saturday, um, like on the lottery. You know, you hear the like Graham. Um, was it Graham? Yeah. Graham uh, something, wasn't it? Who used to do the voice? Yeah, it is. It's this it's... booming studio voice that come in with a, yeah. a bit of commentary. I love it. Saying that, I don't even know if Tim was uh, live on air, if that was just to us just then. No, this is so. the thing. It could have gone straight into just our ears, but uh, yeah. Tim Tim probably pushed that through. So, uh, okay, we've now created this background toggle. So we've got on and off, and we've got our aspect ratio, and we can choose it just like this, on and off. So all of our features are there that we would like, and I'm actually just going to copy in our effects that we put on the title for the box blur. Uh, so let's just copy that and let's paste it on the aspect ratio just so we've got like a, a nice bit of um, softness and faded aspect to the edges over here. And uh, yeah, we've got this very analog, um, innocent looking style of things. So I think we are just about at the level of completion for this. We go. It's Alan Dedicate, by the way, the uh, the voice on the lottery. Alan ah, Dedicate. There we go. 
Yeah. So, um, so before I export this, I'm actually just going to organize things up just a little bit more, just get things nice and tidy. So in our bottom left of Essential Graphics, we can add a group. And let's start off with, um, so main thing is the media. So we've got this. I can just then drag and drop and pop them in this little group. And I'm going to put it into, actually, I'm going to leave the aspect ratio. Let's set uh, chaos and grain. And then I'll leave the background. Let's just organize this into a nice order. Add another group. Let's call this one. Here we go. Back, ground. Got it in one. Background color. Background toggle. And what else do we want? Uh, so we got our text. So let's add. Let's call this one um, main. And we've got text options and our aspect ratio. I'm going to put those into the main. So now we've got these three prominent groups, and I could toggle these down and export them out. And then when you open in Premiere, they will look exactly like this. You can choose to open some of them or all of them and uh, and give flexibility to the user. Uh, before we actually export it out, though, we want to find a position that sort of tells the narrative of what this title is. So I'm going to go for this point, which is just where this, uh, this warp comes down through the title. And I'm going to set a poster time. And now it's updated this thumbnail with how this is going to look. And if we save it and then export motion graphics template, it's going to run through and compile all of those compositions together and give it some keywords. So I'm going to do media, media replacement. Um, what else have we got in here? Title. It's a slight also style. worth. Um, mentioning the the checkboxes above, by the way, just to um... the checkboxes. Yeah. So when you're in the export dialog, the things that warn you if oh if, these ones. If, yeah, uh, yeah. Yes. Good. Good shout. Um, so yeah, this is actually something that I kind of always just set and forget. Uh, but yeah, do you want it to warn you if it's using fonts that are not available on Adobe Fonts? So if you've so you've got a license for uh, some font, or it's like a, a corporate font that you might be using with your business. Um, you need to make sure that it's going to be usable for other users. So if you are doing this as a company branded thing, you want to make sure that whoever's taking the titles is going to have access to the font that you've used. Otherwise, it's going to replace it with a default font and things won't look so great. Um, luckily, though, if you're using Adobe fonts, you will get the automatic download and update of that font if you haven't activated it on your system already, um, which is a massive benefit because it means that you can you can set your titles and styles. You could then start selling them on Adobe Stock or somewhere else, and other people can active uh, get access to it. And because they're using Premiere, they will have a Creative Cloud subscription, and they will then automatically get the Adobe fonts, and it will all synchronize over. Um, no stress involved. You don't have to go and manually choose the font, find the one that's used, things like that. Yeah. Um, very... and, and organizations can actually do that. If organizations, say like the BBC, who who do use uh, their own font, uh, they can actually, and individuals can add, can add their own, but to, to a lesser benefit. But you can add those into um, Adobe fonts for your mm. organization. So it's very handy. Yeah, definitely. Mm. Uh, second on here is warn me if uh, After Effects needs to be installed. So I'm not sure when it happened, but I seem to remember there was a moment when Mogut's, because uh, previously you used to have to have After Effects installed in order to use Mogut's, whether you used After Effects or not, it was just the engine that was required uh, on your computer for Premiere to run. And then there came a time when it was just no longer needed. You could um, just run Premiere Pro and uh, it took all of the code base for After Effects and built it into Premiere Pro. Um, but I think there are still some legacy effects and possibly some legacy controls in Mogut's that you do need to have After Effects installed. You don't have to ever open it, you just have to have it installed. Um, and likewise, uh, final one, warn it if any text controls can't be edited with the Premiere Pro type tool. Um, so it's just making sure that this is as usable as possible, that when you save it out, you're not going to cause headaches for people who are using it and it breaks. Um, so that's all well and good. Uh, keywords, 
I've just added in a few here. I also think it's a good idea to add in your name because you never know, you may get titles from other sources and you want to find your titles and you've maybe not organized them into libraries like I have here. So we hit OK. That saves it across. That's all good. And now if we switch into Premiere Pro 2021, you need to make sure you're using 2021 in order to get this media replacement tool. And if we go across into our timeline, find our libraries, here's our live slate titles. Let that load in and boom, here we go. Now with our essential graphics, we have all of our controls and everything will update just as they did in Premiere, uh, sorry, in After Effects. We have our media here. And if I take this clip, which I believe, uh, yep, so let's go. If I drop this into our media replacement, we can swap that clip out. And that will update in just a tick. I hope. It should do. There you go. There we go. There we go. Um, and we can adjust the, the scale on things uh, depending on how that's set to fit. And you'll see that it, it moves things around and adjusts. And we've got that effect happening. Uh, I believe I still got that color correction that I did in After Effects. So that's also applied it. Um, as I said, originally, I wouldn't apply those color effects into After Effects because it's, uh, it's not going to work for every clip. But the, uh, the one that I chose just had a slightly wrong white balance. And we can adjust our RGB chaos so it's maybe not as pronounced an effect. And we could decrease the grain. We could edit the title um, to something like this. And everything should update as we go. See, now, that, now that I've adjusted it off center, but I have the text centralized, so here's where I would need to go and make amends to things. So I can run back into After Effects. I can choose my title. I can set my paragraph to left aligned. And let's move this back over to something like this. So it's definitely in a safe area. And in fact, let's go, oops. And just make sure that we're not jumping in way too far across with this. Um, zoom out a bit. There you go, doing it, doing it fairly rough. So now we've made those amendments, save it again, hit export. And you will have to add in your keywords again, uh, which is why it can be a good idea. And I do this quite frequently. I write out my keywords separated by a comma in a separate text file, and then I'll just paste them in. Um, because as you're stress testing things, you'll probably find that you'll, you'll tweak and export them out multiple, multiple, multiple times. And um, eventually you'll find one that, that uh, is stress tested and works fully. So let's drop this in. And in fact, let's do the replacement. And that should keep that media up to date. There it is. And our text is up to date, but now we've corrected that position there. And uh, yeah, there we go. Everything is working. Now you can imagine how this could um, translate even further. Sorry, that background's not working just because it's on a black background already. But if we have it over a color or something. Uh, but you can imagine how we could take this further. And we've got this one media thing and we've got our one title. But what if we created different options? So let's say, for example, um, do, 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 here's my blue Peter moment. Um, so what if we've created different options and you create a drop down where you have different effects and depending on which effect you've chosen, we can use those expression controls and we can say, oh, we could have a VHS effect. We could have a different effect. We could have a white noise effect, all these different ones. And you've only replaced the media once, but the effect is chosen by a toggle and you really start to see how the flexibility and the power of just a single media replacement can be. And you can control all of your creativity um, with a single dropdown. So I'm excited to, to make quite a few uh, titles like this and play around with different styles. Obviously, we can do some analog ones. These are quite popular option to go with. We could do some space agey ones. We could do anything, really.
Um, yeah, there's 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 very few limitations to the, to the format. Definitely. Yeah. No, huge. That is fantastic. So a few people not not quite understanding the 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 or just a couple of people actually just not uh, quite understanding the the point of these. Thinking they seem like like reverb mic saying it seems like a lot of extra work for something they might not use again. But but just to highlight what I put in the chat there, uh, reverb mic, it's for things that you use frequently. Mm. So if you were doing the front end of a particular title with something like this. Yeah, or, or at any point in a production, this is really, really useful because you can just update very quickly and you can have different instances of it. So you might, for example, have this as a particular segment in a production right? and then you move on and then you've got a different segment and it means you haven't got to create something, render it out and then bring that in because that creates your whole different workflow loop. Whereas this is very, very, very smooth. Yeah, so. I mean, even in, in the case of just uh, simple titling. So here uh, we've just been, I must admit, very much messing up my template document that I use. Um, but I, for every uh, production that I work with, I have this template Premiere Pro document, which has these empty timelines. And if we have a look through something like this, they've got all my titles laid out because every video I do um, starts with all of these assets. And so they're repeated frequently and it's a great way of, of repeating it. But likewise, I could create chapter markers with that style of title that I just created today, but replace the footage with something that was shot relevant to the video that I'm making. And if you spend the time and energy creating a system and a theme and a, a style, and this is probably more apparent for branded work because they have their style guides in place and they, they last you know, for months and years. Um, you could create something that would have the longevity to to be applicable over a, a year or so. Um, or if yeah. you're generating content for all the different social media platforms and you just need to adjust the titles, if you do it with a Mogut, you can just do it once, set and forget, and um, yeah. and have it run. But I mean, this title here, for example, this was created and it's manually placed in the uh, the image. And I've got in here drop downs so I can change my icon to say I wanted to promote my LinkedIn, for example, or I wanted to promote TikTok, different icon, things like that. An avatar, I've got myself here, I've got my partner in here as well. Um, but if I wanted to make this usable for other people, until you did the media replacement, there was no way of changing that image. But now I could change it and I could just add in a square asset and add in your own avatar and change your own username. So let's go for at Tony. There we go. There you go. <laughs> Joe, that's been fantastic. Thank you so, so much. It's been great spending this time. It's really, really flown, flown by. It's been, and uh, yeah, you are hands down, I think, the most structurally organized person we ever have on here. And that's a good thing. It's a compliment. I'm not, <laughs> it's, it's, you know, it's, uh, yeah, it's fantastic to see. And the working practices that you employ, well, I mean, you know, it's your job, right? You, you, it, it's your own time you're wasting. Says Tony, exactly. sounding like, sounding like a geometry teacher from the 1970s. Yeah, no, <laughs> it's I your mean, own time you're wasting, Alan. If you're, <laughs> uh, I mean, if you were to, if you were to take it into the geometry and my, my sort of curve of productivity, uh, I'll do it this way so you yeah. see it on the camera. Yeah. So I go from spending a lot of time, a lot of time, not getting a lot done, but I'm just building the foundation, and then suddenly it rockets. And I can repeat everything because I've set the foundation and um, yeah, and the consistency for efficiency. And uh, the only aspect that happens again frequently is as I spend longer doing things, I find more ideas. I'm like, oh, I could do this. I could build that. And I'm just constantly tweaking. So whether I'm saving time in the long run, I'm not sure. But I'm definitely, definitely coming with uh, more options and flexibility at the end of it. Um, I'm amazed, actually. I managed to uh, to get that to run within the 90 minutes. I was a little bit worried that I was going to have to go you to said, you said I made before we went live, but you did brilliantly, did it brilliantly. Do you know, one of the things I, I when people, um, for people who, who, by the way, are, are still like, oh, I don't know if I'd use it. Just imagine, right? So most of us, our local news programs here are about, what, 15 minutes, something like that, half an hour tops. Just imagine that you had, you'd been dropped onto work, working on one of those news programs 
for for 15 minutes for a 15 minute show and have imagine how many different guests and different locations and different topics you could be covering in that time having something flexible like this is exactly what you need so imagine yourself in that situation and it should make sense every time when you see a lower third pop up on the news later on today just try and keep count of how many there are and if yep. you'd want to make each one individually or paste them in from something else yeah definitely yeah. um yeah. i think the the media replacement is just the the cream on top for it yeah, um, you know to add in extra little detail yeah but uh i i rave about them so much i i love the moguts i think it's it's one of the the biggest um selling points i think for using premiere is because you've you've got that flexibility and power of after effects that you can just pull in um and consistency is key across everything as soon yeah. as you get something consistent people people flock to it and they remember it and um unless you're consistently <laughs> bad with things but generally speaking um consistency will will get you through any any element of creative work i think definitely yeah i think so i think you're right it's good stuff but that's it for us for today and um don't forget everyone you can come along join us on discord if you want to chat there, people still chatting long and throughout the day uh, as they do that. It's been great spending uh, this time with everyone and uh, fantastic, Joe. Thank you very much. Very welcome. Catch you again soon. Yep. Yeah, and uh, don't forget to check back in on Friday. I think we've got Natalie on Friday. You'll have to just forgive me for that. I didn't check before I came on. Should have done uh, really. But Sophia is here on Friday. There we go. Thank you, Tim, in my ear. Perfect. Right. See you, everybody. Take care now. Bye-bye. Yeah, bye-bye.